Hey everybody, this is meteorologist from Region Weather Live, your YouTube source for weather across the Dakotas of Minnesota. And we're just going to do a quick update on storm number two and three just to see how timing is for the next couple of systems and take a look at the updated snowfall forecast. So what we've got here right now is 6 a.m. on Tuesday. So again, by the morning hours here by 6 a.m., we're already starting to see that next band of snow move from west to east across the Dakotas. By the time we get to the noon hour here, you can see it runs across Devil's Lake just south of Grand Forks, coming up to Detroit Lakes, uh, kind of coming up to that Redwood Falls area and on southward and has already moved through portions of Lake Aberdeen and Watertown and Sisseton as well by the noon hour and then back behind it because we are having this little bit of a warm front that moves through. We've got some, uh, some rain actually on the back side of the snowfall because temperatures obviously going to be just a bit, uh, going to warm up just enough to see some rain on the backside of that snow. And also keep in mind as you watch this move from west to east, as I said in the video last night, is that we might have just a sliver of just a little more intense snowfall through this as it moves from west to east. So you might have some areas that quickly drop down to a half mile, maybe even less along with just a little bit breezier winds in here as well. So uh, some of those visibilities will reduce down as this particular snow band moves from west to east. And by 6 p.m. on Tuesday, you can see now that snow has moved into northeastern parts of Minnesota, as well as across the metro area down in the southern portions of Minnesota here. We could again be seeing just maybe a little sliver of more moderate perhaps a snow for a bit as we get into the evening hours. So that evening commute is going to be a little rough already as we get into Tuesday evening because of the snow that is going to be running through the region. Now we're also getting on the back side of this storm number two here as that pushes eastward. We've got just a little bit yet before this next system pulls out and moves into the region. So as we get to midnight here, you can see just a little bit of elongated area. That snow just kind of lingers on through the overnight hours. And then finally, by the time we get to 6 a.m. Wednesday morning, that system finally pretty much wraps up and moves eastward just in time for this next one to come out of the Rockies, the big one, storm number three coming out of the Rockies beginning Wednesday morning. All right, snowfall for Tuesday through Tuesday night. I really haven't adjusted a whole lot. I think we're still pretty close to on track with this particular storm system. You can see we're still looking at a swath of five to eight inches. Some models are predicting even a little more in with this and also has it slightly adjusting just a little bit north. So just, you know, as we take a look at this, just be mindful. Some of this could, some areas could pick up just a little more. Perhaps this little area shifts just a little bit further north. All a little bit variable, somewhat up in the air, but this is kind of the general consensus still of what I'm thinking. Really, again, haven't, haven't changed it from last night. So we're looking at that five to eight swath, five, uh, the three to six inches here in the yellow. We're looking at one to three anywhere in the green, and then a trace to one inch anywhere in the blue. And again, I'll have these graphics put in my Facebook and Twitter and Instagram page that I'll share at the end of this video. Okay, storm number three for the week. Here we go. Here comes the big one coming out here on Wednesday morning at 6 a.m. And as we slide this to about noontime, we could see some of the intensity starting to pick up just a little bit already into southeastern portions of South Dakota, southern Minnesota. And we also have this freezing rain and sleet line already making it into the far southeastern portions of Minnesota as well. Still plenty of snow back to the west across western portions of South Dakota still. And as I'll show you in a bit, the winds by this point are already increasing out of the northeast. So any snowfall that does start to occur as we get through the afternoon hours on Wednesday are going to start to blow and drift and things are really, really going to deteriorate quickly. And so as we move to 3 p.m. and 6 p.m. again, we continue to see moderate to heavy snows across southern portions of Minnesota, perhaps even leaking into a little bit of South Dakota as well. We continue to have that freezing rain and sleet just kind of slinking into the southern portions of Minnesota. We've got the strong north-northeasterly winds continuing on at this point already still at 6 p.m. And still, we've got the snow that remains back to the west. So everybody in through here really is going to get messy as we get later in the day on Wednesday into Wednesday evening. Things are just not looking good. 
Now by 9 p.m. and midnight, latest model has another band of heavy snow pushing out of Nebraska and moving into southeastern portions of South Dakota and eventually will move into southern portions of Minnesota as well. By 3 a.m. and 6 a.m., continue to see light to moderate, at least probably some moderate snow across the Twin Cities area. Strong northerly winds really going to impact the Twin Cities, really going to impact the southern portion of Minnesota as we get through the overnight hours, Wednesday night into Thursday morning. More than likely, we're going to have multiple road closures, interstate closures, school closures, business closures by the time we get into that Thursday morning time frame. Now, beyond that, as we get to 9 a.m. and noon, you can see that that snow begins to push on out. That heavy snow is now out of the region. We're left with just some light snow across the area. However, the strong northerly winds continue still as we get to that noon time frame. And then by 3 p.m. and 6 p.m., the snow moves out, the winds begin to decrease, and things are on the mend by that point. But unfortunately, that might not mean that roads are going to be open. Of course, it takes a little time to get those roads back open. Things are just... It's going to take time, folks, with this. There's so, so much snow that's going to occur out of this. There's going to be so much wind that's really going to make a mess more than likely through Thursday night and perhaps even through Friday morning. And there's your snowfall forecast for Wednesday through Thursday, 17 to 22 inches anywhere within this red mark, 12 to 17, stretching way back into central parts of South Dakota as well. 8 to 12, really anywhere in this yellow area. So look at that, guys. So look at that. Oh, every Everywhere inside the yellow here, all this, all this is looking at over 8 inches of snow, upwards of 22 inches, perhaps even more in some of these areas. So it's really, this is, these storms are really just dumping a lot, a lot of snow. Now, I do have to put the caveat in some of this in that there is some flexibility in this, allow some flexibility in this, especially as we look at this area in through here. Notice how narrow this is by the time you go from that four inch mark up to 17 to 22. There's, there's not a lot of room and that's because of that rain and freezing rain that could kind of develop in through here. So there is some variability, particularly down in the southern portions of Minnesota. But as I said in the video last night, ultimately it doesn't matter because if you don't get a ton of snow, you're going to be dealing with the freezing rain and sleet and the roads are just going to be a mess anyway. So some of you might say, well, we didn't get the snow that was forecasted, but we did get all this freezing rain and sleet and wind and our power's out. And that's just kind of the stuff you might have to deal with down there other than the heavy snow just depending on how far north the system actually makes it. And then of course, there's still variability between the models. Some of them wants to take this big band here, this heaviest band and push it just slightly north, a little bit further north in through here. And some actually wanna slip it just a little bit south. So even this area isn't exact at this moment, but this is kind of what I'm thinking as to who has the best chance for receiving that much snow. Now, when it's all said and done, and if everything works out the way I think it will over the next couple of days, this is epic. There, I mean, we're talking about record breaking snowfall. Probably we're looking, I mean, we're talking about a storm that hasn't occurred since 91. Everybody talks about the 91 blizzard. I think people are going to be talking about this storm. Look at this possibility from Tuesday through Thursday, 25 to 30 inches of snow here in the red, 20 to 25, all these areas in the purple, over 12 inches across this wide swath in through here, a big, big swath across much of South Dakota, southern parts of North Dakota, and really the southern two thirds of Minnesota. And then we go down from there, six to 12 in the blue, three to six in the green and a trace to three in this little uh, purplish color. And again, notice how tight it is in through here. That could shift either north or south, just depending on how this storm exactly tracks. All right, now with that third storm, we're just gonna jump ahead with these wind gusts and we're gonna start to take a look at that third storm as we get into Wednesday. And even as we get into Wednesday morning already, by 6 to 7 a.m., we're already looking at gusts over 35 miles per hour. So just as that snow is already starting to move in there, it's going to be blowing and drifting around. 
and it only increases from there. As you can see, as we get to noon hour, it starts to crank up to 40 to 45 miles per hour. And then as we get into the evening hours and kind of get to that 6 p.m. time frame, it begins to spread now even eastward in through here. We still continue to have 40 to 45 mile an hour winds kind of in the Cote Prairie area and that down to the Buffalo Ridge. And then uh, more, the, more of that uh, stronger winds a little bit further east from there. And those winds are expected to last and persist through the night. You can see here we are past midnight getting to 3 a.m. and finally by 6 a.m. on Thursday. It kind of shifts just a little bit further north through the overnight hours, starts to lighten up a little bit on the south by the time we get to 6 a.m., but ultimately by this time, the damage is done. So between all that wind that I just showed you and all that snow that's expected to fall, the Weather Prediction Center has put these areas in eastern parts of South Dakota and southern parts of Minnesota in the extreme impact for winter storm. So that means extremely dangerous or impossible driving conditions, extensive and widespread closures, disruptions in, uh, to infrastructure may occur, life-saving actions may be needed. Basically, folks, we're looking at the likelihood of seeing blizzard warnings in through this region as we get through the day on Wednesday. As we get through the day on Wednesday, things are going to steadily go downhill and then as we get into the evening and nighttime hours wednesday night more than likely more and more we're going to be seeing road closures business closures and things are just going to jam up completely within that area and even beyond that even these areas in the red this big area in the red are looking at major impacts where we're still looking at dangerous or impossible driving avoid travel if possible they're saying widespread closures and disruptions to infrastructure may occur so even really, again, within this region, there's going to be problems. There could even be some blizzard warnings near zero or zero visibility within that region as we get through the day Wednesday and into Wednesday night. And one more thing to show you, everything here in the blue is a winter storm watch. Everything in the pink are winter storm warnings that are issued. So make sure you check with your National Weather Service to see the exact start and stop times these warnings and watches and then these areas here in purple and southwestern portions of North Dakota are winter weather advisories but I wouldn't be surprised if that gets upgraded as we get along uh, move through and, and get a little bit later in the time frame as well and in fact just look at this folks already just just kind of on the edge of the screen we're already seeing blizzard warnings and associated with these with this with storm number two I mean we had all kinds of problems up here in the North Country, up here in Grand Forks with storm number one. We had so many roads, so many cars in the ditch along I-94 and I-29. Roads were closed for a bit. There was no travel advice. And this was supposed to be one of the weaker parts of the storm. Storm number one was, was supposed to be not that bad. So that just shows you where we're at with things. So just use caution as we get into Tuesday more snow coming through South Dakota, Minnesota, and then it just, it really things just shut down Wednesday and into Wednesday night. So prepare yourself, take a look at the timing for everything. If you can just stay home, don't go anywhere, obviously plan ahead, especially if you're living out in the country or more in the, or in the metro area, because things will get clogged up. Roads will shut down, businesses will shut down, schools will shut down. So just plan accordingly with all that. I will have live feeds going with everything as this progresses. So uh, I will have cameras and satellites and radars and everything showing up. I will be on the live chat. So if you got any questions throughout the next couple of days, make sure you check in. So make sure you subscribe down below, hit the bell button so that you see when my feed is on live because you're going to want to know and I'll have the road updates and everything else uh, associated with it as well. So make sure you hit that subscribe button. So all right, everybody, it's late. I need to get this out and I will have another video out uh, tomorrow night, depending on how long we let that live feed go. So just make sure you tune in and we'll keep you updated all day tomorrow. All right. All right, here we go. Storm number two and three. We're, we're, we're going to be ready for it, right? So for Region Weather Live, I'm meteorologist Brad Warner and everybody plan ahead. Stay safe. Have a good day.